Hi everybody, it's Christine Bertram. I am coming to you live from the Hive in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And it is December 8th. It would be my grandma's 108th birthday today. And my mom said, isn't it a good thing <laughs> that she's not here for 108? Because you, oh, I don't know if I know anybody that has ever lived to be 108. And my grandpa would have had his 108th birthday last week. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, you guys. So I was a couple minutes tardy because Chris is here. She just popped in. Um, well, she's not just popping in. She's going to be staying. <laughs> and we're going to start working on designing the winter creative escape cards, which is on the docket for tomorrow. Yay. Uh, so she just went inside to heat up her food for dinner. Uh, but we were trying to figure out the whole closed captioning thing. But... I want to say hi quickly to Mary Lemke, Becky Christensen from Wisconsin, woohoo, Becky Rohr, and then Doral's here as well. You guys are looking for some good guy cards, yay, and you're getting some ice and snow tonight. Not excited. Oh yeah, we're supposed to get like three inches as well, I think, tomorrow. Hi, Angela Knutson and Donna Gushki. Uh, hit the thumbs up. Perfect. Exact. Yes, yes, yes. Let's get that thumbs up. You guys, I even forget to do that until you tell me to do that, you guys. So I appreciate that. Every little thumbs up helps to spread the joy and love that I like to share with you guys. Hi, Randy Schultz. Do you have your new phone? <laughs> no. Um, not my new phone. I have a new computer. It arrived last week. Have I turned it on yet? No. Hi, Lynn Beasley. I am a little afraid to... Uh, start that process. It takes about um, maybe five hours. <laughs> I would say once I sit down with a new computer to try to get it all done. Hi, Amy Ponce. Hi, Millie Kindle. I would have to say, so the computer that I got to replace my old computer, Kelly is going to get it. I just can't stand it. It's whatever, whatever brand it is. I don't like how little the keys are. My fingers need a little more room. I like to have my fingers not cramped into a small space and she's got skinny little fingers and she loves it and I'm happy about that. So I just know that when I set up that computer with Word and Excel and all my passwords for all my accounts, it took the afternoon. And I'm like, where did my afternoon go? So I know I'm a little bit leery. I'm thinking about when I can when would be a good strategic time to do that. <laughs> and never. And that's the answer. There's never a good time to get a new phone or a new computer. So, but good question. Hi, Jean Tarwilliger. Watching on the big screen. Woohoo! So Chris is here. <clears throat> and I was trying to tell you guys that we tried to set up the closed captioning. And she's like, Well, I sent you the screenshot. I'm like, Well, yeah, so did Sandy Wickliner. So so did Donna. So did so did every like like four people sent me. Angela did. I, hi, Mary Carls. You're going to be late. The granddaughter just got a nice... Oh, awesome. Congratulations to your granddaughter on getting her dough. Awesome. Hi, Donna Grushki. Um, Oh, I'm going to show you those rings of nature cards here really quick. Um, thanks for sharing, Amy. So I also did share the link for this video in Facebook. So if you guys are on Facebook and want to share the link, that would be awesome. If you want to share it from here, that's awesome. I really appreciate all of the sharing. <laughs> sharing is caring. Uh, so we, we tried to do the whole Switcher Studio. So you guys, I don't know... The, the hiccup I'm having is I'm live in a, an application called Switcher Studio, and then Switcher Studio feeds it to YouTube. And the reason I use Switcher Studio, I think the main reason is because I can toggle back and forth between my camera and my phone, right? Now, I shouldn't say that. I have a phone up here. It's an Apple phone that I only use for the, this purpose, and I have a tablet. And then I have my personal phone that I use. You guys, I got so much technology and I got a computer, too much technology. So what, what's happening is we were trying to research like what it takes to turn on closed captioning so that you guys can watch the live with closed captioning as well as the replay. Because right now you can watch a replay, but I know you sometimes people like to watch it and not um, always have the volume on. So we're in the process of still trying to figure that out. And I had all of this all set up, so we didn't want to play around with it once I had the links created. So just know we are still trying to figure out the closed captioning. <clears throat> okay, we're here for the He's the Man class, you guys. I do not have any kits left of this class. It actually sold out last week, Friday. Uh, I even sold my display kits. So when I kit up, I usually keep out a couple extra sets for me and I put them together before the in-person class. Hi, Diane Bogenhagen and I made the executive decision before I put those kits together that I think we could work without having those extra sets because I have very small classes of this one. It's the time for the Christmas season and 
it's everybody's got the hustle and the bustle going on. And so I had a very small class last night. I had three people and then on Saturday I have five. So we didn't need those extra samples. Uh, we could get by with just the samples I have, just one card, which is the first time I've ever done a class only having one set of samples. You guys, I actually did my open house on Sunday and I could not find my samples for people to look at. I finally found them today when I decided to clean up a little bit because Carissa was coming over. <laughs> yes, I cleaned up for you, Carissa. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> just FYI, people can see you from that spot. In case you're, she's waving. My mom would never want to sit there because she's like, am I on camera? And I'd be like, yes. She'd be like, okay, I'm moving. Hi, Sandy Wicklander. Hi, Deb Norman. So yes. So you guys, I've only made one set of these cards and um, I sold off the extra kit. So I think we have 39. And so we did a, we did a great job. We predicted 40 and or I should say 48. And so all of them are gone. So hoping nobody asks me for any because I always feel bad saying, sorry, I'm all out. Okay, so we're going to do He's the Man. I also want to put it out there that when we're done with class, oh, I got to print the form. I went through and picked out the names that um, are for the monthly class card challenge, the drawing for the free stamp set from the last chance, and then also the class card challenge. The only thing that I did forget to pull, hi, Sherry Martin, are the top fans. So I will have to pull those, and tomorrow morning there will be a post in the morning that I scheduled tonight and I'll announce who all the winners of everything are. In case you're not watching, then you can see that post and know who is winning stuff. So just know that that is what I want to do after class along with the door prize drawing. Um, so Deb Norman says, hi, Carissa. <laughs> all right. The other thing I want to share with you guys is the Rings of Nature class, just in case you missed it. I was live yesterday. I did a swap card showcase and you guys can go back and watch that live. Uh, the other thing, we just, the we put it together today. So Kelly has learned that there's a new process with doing the whole YouTube lives. Um, we realized in the last 24 hours, I think I put it together yesterday and I think she kind of talked me through what happened. Uh, she's been taping the Technique Thursdays for you guys, but she's... So when I go live with you, I go live. I don't have to schedule anything because we're just doing a live class at the time that I say we're going to do it. And when I do my ad hoc stuff, I just go live. Well, when Kelly is doing Technique Thursdays, you guys, she comes in earlier in the week or sometimes she'll tape two of them at one time and she doesn't want them to go live. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like a double dose of Technique Thursday on a not, a not on a Thursday. So here she's been filming these Technique Thursdays for you guys for the last four weeks and she gets them from Switcher Studio to YouTube, but she wasn't scheduling them after. And so I, there was a few steps that were missed there. Hi, Sherry Martin. So I, I, I think we, I understand what's happening uh, and I can teach her and talk her through the next steps to get them out there. And so you guys are gonna get a quadruple dose, maybe I think, of Technique Thursdays. I believe from November 17th, the 24th, and then there was the first, and then I believe there's the A. So there are four Technique Thursdays. So just know, as I have a little time, I'm going to publish the links in Facebook uh, and share them like one post at a time so that you guys can start to get caught up on Kelly's Technique Thursdays. So I feel a little bit bad because she was always trying to help um, share techniques on classes that are coming up. Hi, Melanie Foy. And so you might see, oh, she's got, Chris has three of these cards left or she has six of this class left. Well, that was on the day that she was planning for it to go live. <laughs> so, so anyways, if you guys are ever wondering what past classes I have available, just know you can always go to the end of my PDF schedule and you can see what past classes are available. Uh, I'd rather stamp with you. Yay, Melanie. Awesome. I'd rather stamp with you too. So the schedules are out there, you guys. I sent a little lengthy email, so I shouldn't say little lengthy. <laughs> That's like an oxymoron. I sent a, a longer email just trying to explain things. I do have a bunch of newbies that always start watching me and sometimes they don't know the process. Hi, Judy Immel. Um, so Judy Immel and Diane Bogenhagen, if you are watching, a memo to you, um, in case you see something in your email from Sticker Mule, just know that I ordered the team gifts. <laughs> we got a deal, but you could only order 10 at a time. So you know what I do? I use your email address and your email. So Diane and Judy, I use your email addresses and I used 
um, two of Kelly's and six of mine and got the deal to get the team their Christmas present and it's for next year because I already have this year so so exciting about that so just so you know if you want to be Snoopy you can oh you you can click on the link and see it I think but if you want it to be a surprise don't look at it but anyways team gifts for 2023 are ordered yay <laughs> all right so um, schedules are there lengthy email if you're not getting emails from me and you want to see that email please contact me so I can, you know, email me so I can forward it to you. Otherwise get signed up for my emails and you will start to see my emails come through. I tried to explain about signing up for classes and how the schedule works and how not everything on my events calendar in my website is up to date yet. It takes time. A lot of time, you guys, it's all click, 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 one thing at a time waiting for the internet. It's not like I can do like that twinkling of the nose and make it happen. <laughs> oh, um, perfect, Sandy Wicklinder. I have, oh, perfect. You're going to do the escape. Awesome. Because I had sent out a reminder to the people that hadn't signed up yet that did it last time. So I'm adding you to the list. I think you're like number 85, you guys. Chris, we have 85 people. 85 people signed up for the escape. Woo. Hi, Sue, Hi, Sue Spiegner. So, I was going to cap it at 88, but I think I'm going to cap it at 96. <laughs> she just said, oh my goodness. So yes, I think it's going to be 96. Um, it's going to be amazing. And that's always a lot of work, but it's always a lot of fun. So if anybody's still on the fence about signing up, just know we have about 10 spots left. And Carissa and I are working on designing the cards tonight and tomorrow. And after they're designed, you guys, I will definitely be going live with a video showing you all the cards. And then like that... The, everything will be, <laughs> there will be no spots left. Usually right, what happens, right? Yep. yep. All right. So back to the schedule, you guys, if you need that email, don't hesitate to reach out. I can forward it to you. Email me, text me your email address. If you're not getting it already, I'd love to send it to you. The other thing that I put out there, thanks to Anna, she helped me pull together the scavenger hunt, you guys. It's one of those things that like, it's on my list. And if I'm sitting with somebody at the moment, it happens. And otherwise I find other things to work on that also need to get done. Well, Anna was over yesterday and we finished off the scavenger hunt. I had about six questions and I'm like, oh, what should I come up with? And she's like, well, let's use these. So I want to show you guys where the scavenger hunt is um, in case you're looking for it. Okay. I will be sending out a separate email about it, but it's in my website, you guys. So go to cards by chrisb.com. It looks like um, crispy, but it's Chris B as in my last name. And go to blog and news, newsletters and files. That's where all the files are that you can ever need from me. Um, it's under, oh, I didn't put it here yet. <laughs> okay. Oh no, it's right here. Oh my gosh. I looked right over it. Do you guys ever do that? You think, oh, I don't, it's not here. And then all of a sudden it's there. Hi, Penny Powell. Enjoy your dinner with your hubby. Um, it's right here, guys. Spring mini catalog scavenger hunt. Duh, right there. Do thir January 31st, okay? When you click on that, it brings up a PDF. You can print it and you can email it back to me. I am only, I, just repeating this, I'll say it twice. I'm only accepting them via email. I'm only accepting them via email or mailed copy. Okay, so two ways. Mail your form to me so I have a paper copy or email it to me and then I forward it to my gal who prints all my paperwork so that she can print it. I do not grade these off of a phone. And so um, if you send me a picture, it's got to be in an email so I can forward it to Rachel so she can print it for me. I get like a teacher. I get my red pen. Not, I've been told not to use red. So I get a purple pen or a pink pen or a pretty orange pen and I grade them. And um, there was no November newsletter, Melanie. We'll talk about that. So uh, uh, yes, yeah, so we'll come back to that. Uh, so scavenger hunts, you can email it to me or mail it to me, okay? Um, my address, you guys, oh, I should have put my address on there. If you need my address, just ask me for it. But just know if you get cards by Christine emails from me, my address is always at the bottom of every email that I send. So that's out there. I did also add um, the last chances out there, but the carry over list isn't there. Um, we're still gonna do a little video on that. But in case you guys are wondering about what I'm talking about with my address, if you go to... I put all my emails in the same spot. If you go to, well, that's a really long one. That one's not a good choice. <laughs> Let's go to this one. If you go all the way to the bottom, that's where my address is right here. So if you're ever wondering where you need to mail something to me, it's there. So I get asked quite a bit, what's my address? So if you are getting emails from me, um, there, I got rid of an email, quick trip. <laughs> so, oh, speaking of Mary Gunn here, <laughs> 
There is a craft roulette show tomorrow night, you guys. The Purple Princess from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, will be joining us on craft roulette for the seventh time in just 24 hours. Yeah, this will be my, it's my three-year anniversary of doing craft roulette with her, and seven times, you guys. Um, here's all this information. So just remember, craft roulette, you guys, is tomorrow night at 6.30 Central. So I have to kick, as much as I don't want to, I have to, oh, you know what I actually thought about, Krizza? Yeah. If you'd want to be like a guest crafter with me for craft roulette. So I'll be honest, you guys, we tried to get Tyler to be a guest crafter because he happened to come in here. So I just finished with Mary Gunn last time and he walked in. And so Mary Gunn got to meet him and he was talking with her and she asked him if he would be my guest crafter, like have us stamping together. And apparently he said no then, but I did follow up with him last week and I asked him, he's like, don't you remember my answer? And I'm like, no, what was your answer, dear? And he's like, no. I'm like, ah. Okay, so then I thought, well, maybe Carissa would want to. Think about the amazing card we would make. You guys, I got itchies. You can see them right here. <laughs> yeah, they're really showing up. <laughs> no? We'll, we'll talk. Oh, man, that's not a no. <laughs> yeah okay well that's not no so now you can say i just planted a seed that's all i can do you guys is plant seeds right okay so hi kathy sanford you'll have to remember to watch craft roulette yes so that is a via a youtube link as well i need to get that link and i will share it to my cards by christine page i should write myself a note to do that to share that link with you guys all right so share the link share craft roulette link on the facebook page you guys all right so, Melanie Foy brought up the elephant in the room. I think it might be the elephant in the room. So, I'm sure people were looking for the new November newsletter. And it's one of those things that it's like if I hadn't written it by the third week of November, I thought, why well, did write it? <laughs> because there's, oh, there's like three days or four days left in the, the, the month. And then all of a sudden now it's what, December eighth and okay and now I would have written the December one so I asked I phoned friends and I asked about the newsletter is it purposeful do people get any benefit out of it besides me already emailing about all the information so everything that's in the newsletter is pretty much emailed out individually to people and it takes me about two to two and a half hours to pull all that three hours to pull it all together publish it fix any mistakes publish it again and it was like okay so I thought I was going to take a poll in the Cards by Christine page to see who benefited. You know, and I, I know that I, I do that hidden newsletter question and the people that answer has always increased. It was usually about three people to seven people to eight people to 10 people to 15. And so now there's about 15 people that respond to it out of 800 people that get that email. <laughs> so I don't know. I was like, well, is it beneficial? So Here's my question to my audience. I'm polling you guys right now, who is ever watching. Like, is it cool to just not do the newsletter and keep getting the emails from me as I send out about the pumpkin and I email about this new kit collection. I email about my classes. Every time I have a class, I'm emailing about it three times. Like everything that's in that newsletter is sent out individually, like the launch party that's coming up with a new, new, new catalog. So is it, did it, I'm, I'm on the fence. Like, just tell me yes or no. You guys f find value and benefit in it or you're good without it. Because I've realized that as I grow my business, there are things that I need to cut out. I do. And is that one of the things that is okay to cut out and nobody's going to miss it? Or is it one of those things that, yeah, people are going to miss it. I need to keep it. So I don't want to take it away, but I'll be honest, November was a rough month with on stage and then having Thanksgiving in there and adding extra classes. And then last week, Naughty Nancy passed away and everything just compounded and compiled up to like, I don't have time to do this newsletter. <laughs> so, oh, he, uh, Melanie is one that likes to hunt in the newsletter to find the question. So there's the thing. Are you doing it for the, the question that I'm asking or are you doing it for the added value and benefit that I'm putting into all the content, right? So I, <laughs> Deanne says emails are plenty. Is it just sent to your, no, it's sent to 750 people. Anybody who is signed up to get emails through my website gets the newsletter and it's about 726 to 800 people the last time i checked it was like 726 so 
oh, over 700 less than 800. So Becky said emails are good. Jennifer is good. Angela said it's good. So, I mean, it's about keeping you informed. That's why, so you guys, this is a really hard thing for me because I don't think I've missed, I've missed two in the last year. I missed two months in the last six months. And that's because as I'm growing, it's finding time to do it is harder. So if, if most people can, I also like the paper schedule included with your class order. Yep, Melanie, absolutely. So just know if you get a class from me tomorrow, I will put a class schedule in there, okay? Uh, just like Sandy Wake, not Sandy Wicklander, but Sandy Wake signed up for my class for the first time, I put a schedule in there. Now that I have the new schedules for the next four months, anybody who had a package that went out today, so 60 people got new schedules. Like, I do put schedules in class packages and um, in your birthday cards uh, if I know you don't have them. So so you people are getting paper schedules from me if they're getting classes from me. So Melanie, if you need a paper schedule, just go to my website and print it off. So your time is more important, said Becky. Yay! Okay, I feel you keep us informed but on a day-to-day -day basis and that we really don't need the newsletter. As you have gotten busier and busier and busier, there isn't enough time in the day to do the newsletter too. Yeah. So, okay. Hi, Hildy. Okay. So that's where I'm at with the newsletter, but I feel horrible. I, I, not horrible, but I feel like, oh, there's a part of me leaving, right? Because when I go back to that newsletter section, it goes all the way down to 2016. But honestly, that's old date. It's old data. It's old information. Who's going to need that data from 2016? So it's just taking up space in the worldwide web. <laughs> Email is great. Class schedule is enough. Okay. So there you go. You guys are all on board with the whole newsletter. I haven't brought it up because I was still toying around with it about doing a potential like um, survey or something like that or a poll on Facebook, but you guys are good to go. So that's where we're at with that. Uh, but thank you for you guys. I know there's what 38 of you guys watching and I value your input. And I'm thinking that you guys speak for the masses when um, when you're speaking. So <laughs> I, I appreciate that. So no newsletter for December feels like a little bit of weight lifted off me. <laughs> so that's good. Um, uh, Donna Grushke has a question in the class schedule or something else you have. Hide a question in the class schedule or something else you already have. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or something else you already have. Correct. I like that idea, right, Carissa? I could take the schedule. I could take the PDF schedule or somewhere on my website or something and put a, put a little hidden comment. We'll have to think about that, where we could hide it. Because people like the challenge, right? They like the challenge of finding things, yeah. right? And prizes. Who doesn't love prizes, right? Okay. So I get it. Um, so I don't want to, you guys to feel like I'm taking away a, a place that I was giving a prize either because, right, everybody loves to have a, an option to win a prize. So we'll look at a figuring out uh, something to do about a hidden question because I do like the hidden questions. The hidden questions to me get help me get to know you. So those people that are willing to answer those questions, it, I feel a, a stronger connection with those people because you're sharing yourself with me by answering the question. And sometimes uh, the question is personal. You know, it's not just, oh, what's your favorite color? Sometimes it was a favorite childhood memory. And Kathy Jackson from Iola, Wisconsin, you guys, she wrote me something this long. Let's go on the camera. That times 10. And I read it and I almost started crying because of her memory that she had with her mother. And it just was, it gives me goosebumps, right? So it's awesome. So I, so those hidden questions to me are priceless as well, but I look at them not from a winning prize perspective. I was looking at it from a connection. I'm getting to know you guys a little bit better. You know, like when you tell me what your favorite color is, purple, I love purple. I can connect really good with a purple person, <laughs> but I also connect good with blue. Chris is laughing. She's blue. <laughs> or hide one in one email a month. Oh yeah. Um, looks like she is on in timeout. Ann Bellinger. Hi, Ann Bellinger. It looks like you're in timeout in the back corner. <laughs> She is working really hard on the computer right now, you guys. Really her desk. Yeah, she she said that I have her chained to the desk, you guys. There's shackles and Shane's back chains back there. That's what Tyler teases. Like he's like, is is Chris is still shackled upstairs with you, to, like designing cards? Like like it's a bad thing, and it's like no, no, it's a fun thing. Well, I think it is. So um, yes, Deanne, that is exactly what it that like that is the what I missed about the newsletter is that hidden question, um, and I repeat them year over year too. But everybody. Some over the years, you may not realize that I'm repeating them. So awesome. And then I also know who starts their Christmas cards in July. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to figure out another way. If anybody has an idea, I, I, I love the ideas coming in. Um, taking one email a month and 
sneaking in a question to see who's reading emails too, right? So the hidden question really started off in my mind as if I'm going to take the time to write a newsletter, I want to know if people are reading it. And so that's why I decided to give a prize away for somebody who answers it because I make them really sneaky sometimes. And I love it when somebody comes back and says, that was really sneaky. <laughs> so, oh yeah. So, all right. So we covered the scavenger hunt. Um, it's due January 31st. We covered the newsletter. You guys, we're going to figure out a way to add in the hidden question. For those that are new to me, don't hesitate to sign up to get emails from me. So you'll know what we're talking about with all these awesome emails. And um, I'm going to show you guys really quickly the rings of, it's going to be called the rings, rings of nature, I think is what we're calling the class. It's the rings of nature hybrid bundle that's going to be carrying over coupled with the celebration rings of love designer paper. You guys, Kelly created the cover photo for me today. And so I will be um, publishing the class um, in, not tomorrow. I'm with Chris all day and then I have craft roulette, but probably on Saturday, I'll be publishing the class. You guys can watch for information on that. I believe Pat Thomas, you asked, um, I don't know if Pat's watching right now, but Pat Thomas asked if she was signed up and she's not. And I will be sharing the price in that email. And instead of everybody asking me individually, I just watch for the email. And then the email will be full of all the information about the class. Um, so, uh, the rings of a nature class will be between Christmas and New Year's. I just looked at my calendar and I'll probably do them um, twice, you know, both classes in the same week. I have one class already with my helper, um, Tammy. She's already dying cutting the one and the fitting florets will be designed in the next few days. And then Anna's going to help me die cut for that. And they'll go in the mail the week before Christmas and they will be um, hopefully to you. you know, I don't know. If they should be there in time for class. I'm looking at like the 27th or the 28th or the 29th. Okay, not the day after Christmas, but probably the Tuesday or the Wednesday or the Thursday. Potentially could even be Friday if I don't have anything going on for the weekend. But I'm looking at both of those classes in the same week and just knocking them out. Hi, Maria Gilbertson. Yay. You're joining us. Awesome. So, you guys, let me flip down and show you this class because I've been talking about it a lot. So, it's like, um, it's like the Wonderful World class where you're going to do 12 cards. This one's a little different though because it's six cards and two of each card versus Wonderful World was 12 different cards. Oh, I don't know if I can make 12 cards with you <laughs> in one sitting again. Oh, it was like a long time for the bladder. So that's one card. And then I'll have an inside. All of these cards are double matted for your pleasure. <laughs> uh, I know that Julie and Anne and Diane, I, they are all over double matting and they are the first ones to acknowledge and admit that. Uh, so that one's another one and you guys this one was so you'll use either I can provide the designer paper or you will need to provide the designer paper I have plenty unlike wonderful world you guys I only had a like like a half a, I had a dozen packs this one I have enough people or I have enough to accommodate mostly anybody who'd want to take this class with me I think I have like maybe 23 more and then if you do have the paper it's ten dollars less so there's a happy anniversary card so it uses all the stamps and the a lot of the dies from that bundle, and that one is cool. Uh, this is a signature card for Carissa, I think, right? The one with the picture of this dies. Yeah. Yeah, she loves these dies. They have circles that we just used last week with the penguins, and then there's some rectangles. And so we use a little poinsettia, and then one left here with the bird, 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 bird is the word, thinking of you. So those are the six cards for Rings of Nature. Please email me if you're interested or text me, call me, however you want to get a hold of me. Just don't mark going on the Facebook event because that doesn't really mean much. <laughs> the devil matting makes it so elegant. You betcha. All right. Let's get started, you guys. We got class because Carissa is going to be excited to stamp with me. And I'm like, as soon as we're done with class, we're going to go upstairs and start working our way through the spring catalog. Okay, woohoo! She she did say woohoo. I was seeing to see if she'd say anything. Oh yeah! All right, you guys. All right, we're gonna start at the top of the list. Holly Gentry, Carolyn Ketchmark, Becky Gandolfo, Melody Miller, Shirley Malarkey, Donna Grushke, Barbara Barco, Tammy Steckling, Jeannie Parker, Rachel Horsch, Doris Monson, Suzanne Neild, Karen Wetstein, Becky Rohr. Mary Carls, Judy Sharp, Annette Rollin, Deanna Stell, Sherry Everett, Cindy Runtree, Jean Terwilliger, Tundra Hudson, Linda Grady, Dee Serena, Sandy Wicklander, Mary Lemke, Sue Spiegner, Faye Godby, Carmen Melendez, Doral Hoffaker, Marsha Dean, Lori Baxter, Angela Knutson, 
Hildy Vilches, Helen Chase, Nancy Billets, I should say fancy Nancy Billets, Sandy Wake, and Sandy, when you're watching, just know your cards went in the mail today. Um, I got your check yesterday, so that was awesome. And then Millie Kindle, awesome, awesome. So I do wanna announce that two people took advantage of the promotional offer that I had for this class. This is the Sweet Bundle class, which I've been offering for the last maybe four years, maybe in 2017, 2018. Um, and if somebody buys the bundle as their RSVP for this class at any point, leading up to the day it needs to be by, so I think this one was by December 1st, <clears throat> they get a half a pack of the designer series paper. Jean Terwilliger, who just said she's here, was one of those lovely ladies. So she got the half pack of the DSP. And then the other gal was Becky Gandolfo from Livonia, Michigan. And so both those gals, um, they, um, I'm just looking over my notes here real quick. They both got the half pack of paper. So this paper is a little bit different. It is specialty paper, <clears throat> excuse me. And there's five different sheets that have two sides to them. And then there are two sheets of die cut out stuff. And I don't have them down here. I actually, I have a couple to show you, but it comes with a whole 12 by 12 of different like die cut things that are images. <clears throat> excuse me. You guys, I don't know why I went like that because there's nobody in front of me except for you guys, but I didn't want you to have to see that. <laughs> so <clears throat> there's a whole bunch of these die cuts. And um, so for Becky and Jean, I popped them all out. Actually, Diane Bogenhagen popped them all out for you and we put them in a little envelope for you. So yay to you guys. So the next one is Country Floral Lane is the next sweet class um, coming up later in January. So we haven't made the card, so I don't have anything to show you yet. Uh, just know that within like the next week or two, three, I'll have those cards ready for you guys to see. All right. Um, what else was I going to say about this? I feel like I had somebody. Nope. Okay. So that's the class list. Um, oh, before I forget to catalogs did come in. So if you're a customer of mine who has placed an order and you need a catalog. So like, let's say you're a demonstrator and you already have your catalogs and you're good to go. I don't like to duplicate efforts, um, but by all means, I love to get catalogs into the hands of my customers. And um, if you do need one, please reach out to me and I'll get one in the mail to you. Um, I, um, I'd be happy to help out my customers with that. If you're new to me and you haven't placed an order yet, um, what you could do is, I found it's, you're in the habit of being polite. Yes, Melanie. <laughs> um, so um, what I what I found that works for me is like get, have, buying catalogs is an expense and I get that and I like to provide them to my customers. And what happens if you're not my customer at the moment, but you'd like to get a catalog? What I do is I charge for my catalogs. Um, I charge the shipping basically. And um, what will happen is I'll put a rebate coupon in there as well. So like, let's say shipping is $10. I'll put a coupon in there that you get $10 off your first order with me. And if you never order with me, then I'm not out. And if you do order with me, then you're not out. And so then it's a win-win. So just know that that's how I, I kind of work the catalog system. Um, but if you are uh, needing a catalog and you've gotten something from me and you don't have another outlet, because I know that with being a customer, you might shop from other demonstrators. And so you might get your catalogs from somebody else. And that's cool. I'm completely happy with that. Uh, but if you don't have a catalog and you'd like to get one, um, please reach out to me. So though that's what mom and I worked on today. We got a lot of catalogs um, ready for mailing. So just know that they're coming soon. Um, all right, that was a little side note because I forgot to talk to you guys about that. But here's the man, or I said, here is, here's the man. And we switched over to an annual catalog product for this class because we knew that there was a transition coming with getting rid of the, or I should say retiring the holiday mini and going to the spring. So we didn't want to worry about products not being in stock and all that good stuff. So we switched back to the annual catalog to give it some love <clears throat> and... It can be found on pages 78 through 79. And there's a stamp set here. There are dies, designer paper, and then there's the most amazing rustic metallic dots. And that's what we get. I'm going to be pulling in this set just to get a birthday sentiment, sending birthday wishes. I was looking all over for a stamp last night that said something about birthday to put in these cards, and I just could not find anything but a retired one. But Krista found that one for us to use today. Yay! And then here's what the paper looks like. This is an example of what one of those little die cut looks out looks like. It looks like designer paper, um, but it just punches out of the 12 by 12. <clears throat> All right, so those, whoa, the book almost took everything down. 
All right, so that's a little bit of the designer paper. And the stamp set looks like this. When I get up to get the rustic metallic dots, I'll grab the dies, you can see them. So we will be using a bunch of these stamps uh, and we're gonna primarily be using the white ink, the espresso ink, and memento. That's it for ink colors. Uh, there's not a lot for decorating the focal image on the inside. So there is one little corner accent piece. We're gonna put that in one of the cards, but you can always decorate your insides with something else if you need to. Um, one of your cards will have three, three of these classic matte dots, and then you will have one of the other three cards will have a strip of nine of the rustic metallic dots. So just know, I don't remember which one they're in. Um, and then we're also going to be pulling in the Stamparatus, you guys. This is definitely needed when you're stamping. Oh, the stamp is very solid, and it doesn't ink up to stamp very solid. And so by using the Stamparatus, we're going to be able to ink it up, stamp, ink it up, stamp, ink it up, stamp, and get it nice and dark for us. So that is where we're going to pull in one of the great benefits of having a Stamparatus. And let's see what the cards look like. And let's see which one we want to start with. So the there are two that are more black um, tones, and then these are the um, early espresso tones. I think we're going to start with this one because this one it got a couple people I think last night. Well, maybe it didn't. I don't know. <laughs> There's a whole order to it. <laughs> All right, let's move this out of the way for the moment because we don't quite need it. So this card reminds me of Tyler a lot. Uh, when Chris and I worked on these cards, I was all about making sure we used this designer paper so that we could have the tending, uh, the tending, the camping, and uh, with the tent, and it says together for the long haul. When you are looking at the stamps for this, there's the together for the long haul with the VW van, and then there's the um, every day with you is another adventure. So either one of those will work when you stamp it in the center like this. And I don't know. You guys, I'm going to take a poll. Which one should I stamp? And I'll stamp whichever one. Um, do you want the compass or do you want the van? So let me know what you prefer. And that's what we'll go with. We do need the brown ink for this one. So we're going to set it like that. And in your kit, you guys will have lots of pieces here. We have a soft succulent base. Just traditional eight and a half by five and a half. Scored at four and a quarter. You'll want to make sure you get yours burnished. Um, I'm scared when I hear a new class has shipped my stomach drops and I think, how will I get the PDFs? Oh no, Suzanne. So Suzanne, I don't know what was happening. Okay, I, I, I'm going to explain, I think, a little bit of what happened with Suzanne and the PDFs. I send one email uh, with the PDFs a day to two to three. I'm hearing lots of vans. Okay. I ship, I ship, no, I send out the PDF, a th like no more than usually five days in advance. You guys, I don't work that fast. I'm a JITer. I do not send you out the PDFs the same day that they ship. I don't, I just, maybe someday I can have that work that way. Um, but usually like I have, let's just stamp on Monday and I'll write the, P I haven't written the PDF yet. You know, everything else happens. And so my goal is to write it. It's not going to happen tomorrow. So I'll be writing it on Saturday. Karen will proofread it. I most likely will email it out on Sunday. It'll be the day before. And it will be from my Chris M. Bertram at msn.com. Right? It will not be from Cards by Christine. And so this class was emailed out on, on m Monday for Thursday. So usually Thursdays I send out on Monday, which is the Monday class. It's, it's just weird with timing. So, so Suzanne wasn't finding it, but she was looking at my class announcement email, not the email with the PDF in it. So just know that that's a little bit of my process uh, with sending out PDFs. Uh, and some people, you have to click on the little attachment, little paper clip. Some people have to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the email and it's there. I 98.9% of the time or 99% of the time it's in your email and you guys find it. Um, why by somehow you find it. So um, so Suzanne wasn't finding her emails, but part of it was that it wasn't in the emails that she was looking in. And so just know that it's in the email that says, thank you for registering for this class. And then attached is a PDF. <laughs> you know, that's the email that it's in, you guys. It's not in the, the class announcement email. And the timing too is like, just know that if you don't have it by the day before, then reach out to me. But if it's the day before, let it be for just a moment yet, and it'll be most likely... <laughs> I grabbed the wrong kit, you guys. <laughs> Did you notice that, anybody? I grabbed 
uh, the other card. So let's, one moment, please. Let's get these switcherooed here and go back to that one. All right, same size with our card base, though. Instead, though, it's early espresso. How many of you guys were wondering how long before I figured that one out? All right, the, the, it was a unanimous for the van. So we're gonna go with the van instead of the compass, which I'm more than happy with. And then in your kit, you guys, you will have this little rectangle and you will see that it was die cut out of the middle of your mat, yay. We've been starting to remember to do that so that it saves paper. And then you guys will notice that you have these two mats and there's an espresso and a white and that circle was cut out of there and that was cut out of there. And then you had a little arrow that was cut out and that's more than okay because these will get covered up by this piece of designer paper. And you will also have two vellum arrows that are from the layering designs paper. You'll have a piece of white frayed ribbon and then you'll have two white mats that are the same size. Okay, I wanted to show this to you guys though. On your phone, it is all the way at the bottom. On my computer, it is at the top, exactly. So I'm just putting it out there that I always attach, I always attach the, e, the PDF and it's your email provider that shows you how it will come through. Like your email provider is what dictates how you see it, not me. Uh, I wanted to show you guys that this starts off as a three by four piece of paper. And it's so awesome when the back is complementary to the front. It's so easy to do it. And all you have to do is take your trimmer. Uh, and you guys, I've done this for you already. So those that took this class with me, I already cut it at one and a quarter off. So whatever four minus, so two and three quarters. At two and three quarters, all I have to do is cut that. And then I have it flipping over like this and you get the, the two different designer papers out of the same piece. And a three by four mat, if you guys don't know it, a three by four is a perfect size because it gives you exactly 12 mats out of one piece of 12 by 12 designer series paper. So this is gonna be that layer and it'll go on to here, on to here, and then this will be our inside. But we should just do a little stamping and prep work and then we will get this all assembled in no time. We need to do a little bit of white sponge daubering. <laughs> You can see on the side here that it's, you can lightly see the trees. They are highlighted or illuminescenting with a little bit of white ink. My, from the blue Christmas class, my white ink turned, my dauber turned it blue. You're just, and you don't have to worry about the inside part that gets covered up. You're just gonna go around the edges. And I'm gonna show you in the video here, if you can see the white makes it look just a little bit popped up, popped out like the, the raised image shows off better. One of the things I love about doing um, with embossing is sponging over the raised image to highlight it. We did that on that blue Christmas class, I think two times on the painted texture and we did it on something else. Okay, you can see that it just, it is hard to see it. In person, you could see it a lot better. Hi, Susan Bellamy. Susan got signed up for the Winter Creative Escape, so she's on the list. Yay, Feline got signed up too. I think a lot of you guys. I bet there's a bunch of you that are watching right now that are doing it. So excited. Okay, then we need to do our circle here, which is in early espresso. And together for the long haul is what we're gonna do on here. I like the, the stamp for this because the, the wheels actually are where you put the rustic metallic dots. So that, I just, I tried to just eyeball it and center it. I should have practiced on the back, didn't. We're gonna see once what happens. I'm okay with that. <laughs> if you don't have this stamp, let's say you did not invest in the stamp set, find something else and put it in the middle. And actually Connie didn't want this last night. Connie actually chose to put the Holy Smokes, you're amazing in the middle. And that worked perfectly fine as well. So to do together for the long haul is what we've got here. And we're going to just stamp off. Oh, there's the scissors. I'm gonna grab a scrap paper and we're gonna stamp off so that's ready for cleaning. In the inside, I just, there wasn't much from the stamp set that could be used. Oh, but you know what? I pulled in Wildlife Wonder. We could use some of that grass if we like to do that. Why not, right? I'll get a little block for that. And 
we'll grab some soft succulent. So this is ad hoc, you guys. This is not written in the instructions. It's just to give you something on your inside if you want it. And the white pieces are the same size in your kits. So I would do one at first strength and one at second. Pulled in soft succulent because it, it uses um, the same color as the paper. Okay, now there's a, a method to this madness for this ordering <clears throat> of stuff. Let's glue what we can in. So I know this can go, this can go, and then these can go. But I'm not going to glue the backs of the designer paper because I have a big hole here. I don't want my glue going everywhere. So this is the back of that. This is my inside. And then for this, I'm going to go and make a little rectangle around the hole. And then this one goes onto the white mat. And then this one will go on our inside. If you're going to do the multiple gluing on things at the same time, make sure you don't let them fall into each other. And then this piece of designer paper will go here at the top. And then the other one will go from the bottom like that. Okay, so we're gonna cover up that seam with the white frayed ribbon. So you're gonna need some tear and tape. And let's put that on the back and we'll put a couple here waiting in the wings. You're gonna put those two pieces like that. And then from the front, I like to hold it and look to make sure I get it straight. The tape is back there. It's waiting for me to just flip the, <laughs> flip the lid, flip the ends like that and like that. And I know that it's straight in the front. And then we can take that piece and that piece and we're going to glue this onto the brown piece but we're not going to want to put glue all over the back of that because there's holes here that's the one thing we have to be conscious about just grab your glue we're going to glue just like we did that other piece we're going to go like that and then there's no reason why this one can't also get some glue and then Let's get that centered on your early espresso. And then this one, make sure your trees are facing the right way. They are, they are trees and you want them not to be going upside down. You want them the right way up. So that mat's here. And then we're gonna take dimensionals and put them here. And because we've got espresso for the base, I'm gonna pull out the black dimensionals and we're gonna cut, you guys see it's the perimeter just so that I'm not doing it all at like piecemeal. I just like to go, you guys, we just did this the other day. I think I used up the edge too. Go for it. There, so now that's ready. Don't throw those outer perimeters in the garbage. Use them up. Wonderful. So that is so far, let's get that onto the front. And just center that top to bottom, left to right. And then this is here, this mad concoction of stuff. We've got all these pieces. These little bannery things kind of just go different directions out of it. And then this little arrow needs to get cut in half, you guys. So just take your paper snips or scissors and snip it in half. And I believe what we're gonna do is pop things up. <laughs> you can put them flat, you can pop them down, it's whatever you want. I think what I wanna do though is take two dimensionals and put them up here. And then the next one is gonna go opposite it, I think. Let's see here, kitty corner down here. And the little arrow is gonna come out like just past the R. A little short arrow like that. And then the back end of it 
comes out the <laughs> comes out the back end, just like that. And I should have caught that perfect. And then I don't want these to be popped up more. So what I will do is grab a glue dot. Cindy loves this card. Anybody who loves camping or tenting or glamping, hopefully will love this card. It's all about that. And you guys all picked the van, but if I was make, if I would have voted, I would have voted for this one. That every day with you is another adventure because that's how I feel about with Tyler. That every day is another adventure. And oh, Karis just said oh. <laughs> But he didn't hear that because he doesn't ever watch my lives, so he will never know that. <laughs> and then this one will go here. Perfect. Okay, so the question I got last night is, how does this work? Because it's the same size. All you have to do is grab your scissors. That's a good question, Suzanne. It's the million-dollar question. Well, I should say there's a lot of million-dollar questions. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would like to think so. That would be awesome, right? If we were going to get hitched, I would love that. But I'm not going to be the one to ask him, I don't think. I think that I was going to wait for him to ask me. And I'm good until he does or he doesn't. <laughs> um, we're very happy together. This is going to go. So I put more dimensionals. I could have easily used white ones. I don't know why I used the black, except for the fact that they were sitting right there. It is deceiving. It looks like this is next, but actually the way that we designed this card is we put the soft succulent, a sp um, rectangle mat, and then now these circles will go next. And I think so that I don't have to wait for glue to dry. I'm just going to put some tear and tape on. Um, and all four of the cards are awesome. Thanks, Judy. Yeah, we, you know, this suite was really not on the fence or not on the docket for us to to look at but when we were trying to transition from the catalogs we we're like oh we haven't done anything with this suite yet so I put tear and tape on the back and now what I'm going to do this brown is just going to come peeking out this side over here and the brown comes peeking out on this side over here just like that if you would have put the brown and then the soft succulent then you would have seen more brown so I'm more excited about the fitted florets. Oh, that's good, Suzanne. They're coming. I just uh, need about five hours, <laughs> I think, to design the class. I had every thought in my head that today was going to be the day. And instead, my mom it took us till 2 o'clock to get all the packages done. And then it was another half hour to get them to the post office. And then it was about two hours of emails, <laughs> oh, which also needed to get done, right? Then what's going to happen is you can either pop this up or put it flat. And I'll be honest, there's a lot of popping going up, but it's so weird. There's actually, um, the one thing I am noticing is that this is hollow here a little bit in the middle, which is okay. When anybody gets this, they're not going to see that or necessarily feel that. The one thing we talked about, and I think Melanie Foy brought this up, that it's cheaper because the insides, so this would have all been extra weight but because you took it out of that paper, it's actually not adding more weight to it. I think what I'm gonna do is put a dimensional at the top and at the bottom of where the fabric is because the fabric has height to it. And I think that by just putting two at the top and the bottom of it is going to be plenty. And I wanna see some white coming out the edge over there and center it, something like that. And there you go. We've got the double matting. Oh, we didn't double mat this one, but there's a lot of mats on the front. This one would have been super cool. We don't generally double mat the sweet class or the monthly class, but I do double mat the Let's Just Stamp because it's with Diane, and I've started to always double mat for ink, paper, scissors. Uh, so that is what I have. We didn't Stella anything. It is going to be a guy card, um, and the there was a little spider in my Stella pen. He was attached to it. Sorry, little guy. Didn't mean to get you um, waking up and stir you. He was a little one. You guys might not even have even seen him there. I think I'm just going to Stella a little bit around these edges. Guys don't always appreciate the glitter. Tyler has told me that all that glitters is not gold. So don't feel like you have to. But I'm going to go grab the rustic metallic dots, you guys. Well, so I need 10 seconds.
everybody that did this class will have a strip of these dots, meaning what you would have is nine of them. I believe five small and then four big ones. <laughs> and it looks like that. And I don't remember which card it's in. Somebody can call out who's watching who has the kits. Let us know what kit we put them in. There's nine of them. And on this one, the small ones go for the wheels. <laughs> okay. So you can see a difference. Look at the wheels. Have those little there. And here they're empty. Perfect spot to put the gems. So there's one and then two, and then there's a big one to offset those little guys. There's a big one over, you can find anywhere to put it. You know, you could put it right here. Oh, I like that right there too. On this card, we put it there because there's a lot of open space, but on this card, the tent and trees are there and it looks nice over here. Or it could have gone over there, it, anywhere. So if you don't like it where you put it, you can always, uh, sometimes you can't pick it up. We're leaving it right there. All right, Melanie, we'll see you later. Okay, save those for another card. La -da -da, we got one done. Perfecto changeo. Then let's put this one off to the side for the moment and we will work on the next one. This one is perfect for that car lover in your life. So these, this set is all encompassing for guys. You've got your classic car guy, you have your tent camping dude. There's a businessman. And then you also have the Holy Smokes, your griller guy. <laughs> okay. They tried to get every, not everyone, but they went for all different genres of guys, I think. All right. So the samples here and what you have here is, this is a fun fold, you guys. It's got an arm. <laughs> Yay. It's got an arm. The Sahara Sand when you fold this, it that one inch is missing here. And it's actually like 15 sixteenths, I believe, is missing. Hi, Doris Munson. It's actually um, one in 15, one in five sixteenths is off of here, is something about what it should be. It's a little over an inch, just because of how we wanted to map that one. And then what you'll have, the arm is back here, and it's not cut off the side. Oh, you guys, we got our trolls. Have a good time. Find your love. Oh, we don't need them. We have enough love going on right now without them. So let's let's get them gone. Report. So all you guys got to do is hard press on it. Figure out how you do it. I just hard press and report. And then they leave my screen so I don't accidentally click on them. Hi, Lisa Spasic. This Sahara sand, the, the part that's missing is actually not the strip from over here. We've done that in the past, but what I wanted, I wanted a little bit thicker of an arm for this one, just to be able to put a little mat, a little designer paper, just have it a little bulkier. If you use a one inch, it works. It's just a little more, not as sturdy. So I don't even know what length this is. It's something, four and a quarter by one and a quarter and it's scored at three inches. And honestly, you could have a lot of wiggle room with this. Thanks for reporting, everybody. There's a little bit of wiggle room with basically you want your score line over here and you want the flap to end somewhere over here. You can make it as big or as little as you want. The first thing I'm gonna do is just glue it down. <laughs> I'm getting excited about gluing you guys. I didn't even show you what's the rest of the kit. <laughs> but I wanna center this in here and I want my score line to be flush with the edge over here. Something like that. And if you want it higher, you can do it higher. You could do it lower. That just creates the arm. Then you'll have a piece of early espresso faux suede ribbon. You have these two die cuts. This little label die cut. These two mats are Sahara Sand and early espresso. And this one is embossed with the splotchies, uh, splatters, uh, splatters embossing folder. You have two pieces of more paper, <laughs> designer paper, and you have a piece of espresso. Some of you might have that a little bit longer. It's okay. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. 
as long as your left, um, your top, bottom, and right are the same, at some point this gets covered up here and it doesn't matter how long this piece really is, as long as it's at least this long. <clears throat> then you have your designer paper, which is, um, there's a love bug and hot rods and motorcycles on here. The other side is a very soft pattern that would be great for any kind of neutral card. And what happened is that's the back side of this. So when all of these mats got cut out, there were strips left over, and that's where the, these came from, were these strips. So that's a nice time that you can use the back and the front together. This mats onto your early espresso, and then you will have an early espresso and a white. So this is technically a double matted on the inside. Okay, so let's go to town on, <laughs> let's get glue happy. I think we can do a, little, a lot of gluing. So we're gonna flip this one over, and we're gonna flip this over, and we're gonna flip this. Now, I want the splotchies going up versus inverted. That's why how I look at that. If you like it inverted, do it the other way. So go glue here, glue here, glue there. This one goes onto here, and then this one goes on to the brown piece. Now, can you make sure you have the long edges equal and then one of the short edges equal. So it does not matter what the opposite edge is like. Do you want these? Is that what you're coming for? Can you grab the dies for this? They're sitting over there. I was gonna show the dies off. And then this goes onto that mat. Thank you, Vanna. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember to get this. These are the dies. Super cool for labels. So if you don't like the stamp set, let's say it doesn't trip your trigger, you're know, like, I don't want all these different stamps. Okay. <laughs> label, label, banner, 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 label, label, cool die. Okay? There's also one more die that's floating around somewhere in a carton that does these two banners. So the dies are great if you want just dies. Oh, man, this is wrong. Hang on. One moment, let's reverse, reverse. Hang on, let's rewind this camera action. This doesn't go on here quite yet. We need to sneak our arm in there. Okay, let's, I got ahead of myself. I'm so excited about gluing. So let's get this one down. Hopefully you guys, caught, I mean, it wasn't bad to glue that together, but I have a trick. I just noticed that my, I don't have a lot of Sahara sand edge here. <laughs> if that is the case for you guys too, before you glue these, you could trim off a hair of the brown and a hair of the orange designer paper. So you could see a little bit more of the tan. No problem if that's, I know a lot of people like to watch the video and then um, put the cards together. If you haven't put your cards together, I would challenge you to put them together. And if you want, trim some brown, trim that, and you see a little more tan. Mine barely fits in there, but it's still going to be okay. Now that, all right, Doral, we'll catch you later. Now that this is here, we can put a little bit of glue back there. And what I'll do is center this in the orange area, top to bottom, left to right. I didn't put glue all over here. I'm only putting glue on the section that is underneath here because that will create the arm. It'll make it really clean and polished on the back side. So you're not gonna see the arm back there and then you're not gonna see the arm on the front. Now, this piece will go next and I've already got glue on here but I'm gonna put a little bit more glue and that will go over the top. So that hides the arm. Makes it look really clean and polished. And then this piece would go next. Make sure you put the off edge, the weird edge in, and then the other edge goes to the right, because now all of that looks uniform. Perfect. Then we can do some stamping. So it says happy birthday to a classic, uh, which is fine. And then what we could do is put sending birthday wishes. Uh, oh, happy birthday to a classic. Yeah, and then we'll put sending birthday wishes on that one. 
And this one will get the happy birthday to a classic. And that is stamped in espresso. Baking cookies. Have fun, Deb Norman. Ink that up really nicely so that it transfers to that white paper. Good. This is also a stamp you could probably use with the Stamparatus and stamp it double. But you are stamping on white, and white usually stamps okay. Just try it at your best to get it however you want on there. <laughs> and I'm going to let that marinate for a second with a little pressure on it while I clean this one to get a block for myself. Squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. We'll leave that out. Stamp set went right here. Might as well put this away. I'm really letting that marinate, Diane. I don't know if you're still watching. Diana's our marinator. Then this can go here. And let's see how it looks. Good. If you want it touched up at all, you could add um, a marker and kind of touch it up. I'm good with that. And then on the inside here, we're going to put sending birthday wishes. Now you have to be careful. If you stamp it here, you're going to see the ishes come out, the he's come out, the she's come out. Make sure you stay a little bit closer to the right hand side here. Maybe this isn't the best stamp for that. <laughs> I wonder if yeah, that's probably not the best stamp to put there. It's too long. We're going to leave this one blank, you guys. We're going to have a naked inside. It'll be okay. Or I have to find a different, smaller saying, I think, for that one. Oh, let's see here. Oh, oh, we could, oh, that says happy birthday. So we can't do wishing you a happy Father's Day. So that's not going to work. All right, we're going to keep her moving. <laughs> Our inside can get, I think Chris is on a mission now. <laughs> so it's got to be about an inch and a half to two inches. Uh, this one can go onto the inside and put that right there. And then what I would do, I believe I put dimensionals back here. So grab, I want white ones. See if I have any white ones. Oh goodness, I do. I have a whole sheet of them. I'm going to put two dimensionals on the side. And what happens the banner, oh, <laughs> oh it's, your birthday. it's your birthday is coming from Carissa here. Oh, happy birthday to, mm, no, because it says happy birthday to a classic and then it's your birthday. Okay. Should be something like celebrate in a grand way or enjoy, is, does it have enjoy your day in there? No. Something like enjoy your day would be perfect. That's perfect. Oh, man, she did a good one. It says, enjoy the ride, and we're doing, like, the car one. Oh, Judy, Emily, I feel bad. You guys were here last night, and we could have so put that in here. <laughs> enjoy the ride. It's perfect. They're really implying for the piggy on his little moped, but <laughs> they don't know that we got a man that wants to ride a bike like a Harley. Oh, goodness gracious. That set, okay, so remember there's a new enjoy the ride set that's in the spring catalog? This Enjoy the Ride will fit perfectly with that, too. Mm -hmm. Well, we have this class on Saturday, and those people can do Enjoy the Ride. Ah, this is perfect. I waited. and So Carissa picked up on my cue about not having something, and, and she was determined, you guys. I love it. Enjoy the Ride will fit perfectly here. And then I'm going to try it again and move it up a hair on the right-hand side. And I think now I went too high up. Eh, which one's better? That one's better. Okay. All good. Then this will go on our inside. And because we picked a shorter sentiment, it won't come out the edge over there. Double matting. Yay. All right. There we go. There we go. Back to this bad boy. Let's. Whoa, that was really tight. We got to get the um, that faux espresso trim on here. And what I would use is a little tear and tape. Run it along the back like that. And then what you're going to do is have it just center it as best you can. And you're just going to trim the tails off at an angle. Grab your ribbon scissors 
and I would do one like that and the other one facing the same way like that. Noise, very noise. And we're getting there. I think then that will go right over the top like that. I see you have a new bunnies. My order has been in picking for eight days. They're saying it could be 10 days, then another seven to Florida. You guys, I feel bad for you, Penny. I, I get it. Like you probably want your order like yesterday. So this happened last year and I specifically remember it the year before too. What happens is there's the last chance, the clearance rack and pre-order all in the beginning of December, which is at the time that it's holidays, right? The, last year, if I'm not mistaken, Judy, Emily, I don't know if you're still watching, but I could have sworn that it took three weeks to get your order or somebody else's order. Uh, it just took a very long time to get orders. So that is what happens at this time. I learned that around Thanksgiving and all the way through to the new year, whenever I have an order that I don't necessarily need, I leave it regular shipping. But if I need something for a specific purpose, I do the expedited shipping. And I get it that I, like I, I choose to do the extra $23, but I need it stuff for classes and I, I need stuff for, if, it, if it's something I know I don't need, I don't do it. But if it's something that I know I need, I don't take any chances with the shipping this time of year. Whew. Okay, we have a strip here. Yeah, you guys, so I called Stampin' Up! today about something and they're out of, not them, their, their message, their automated message basically says, if you are waiting for a shipment, it's taking up to 10 days to get the, the ship, the orders picked, I think, or shipped out. Yep, not cool, but it's that time of year. Remember it, put a note in your calendar for next year on the 1st of December at like 2 a.m. so that it reminds you that if you want your, your order faster to do the two day, I think that's what I, I have a mental note in my head. Okay, I didn't do any Stella. If I'm gonna do St Stella, yes, Lisa, that is exactly what the message said too, that the only thing that they can do for your order is change it to expedited and it will go out then that day. If you call by uh, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, they will expedite it. Again, it's $23 plus tax, uh, but to me, it's worth it. Expedited two day took three working days. Yeah. So for me, if you order by noon central time on Monday, my order arrives Wednesday. So two and a half to two days later for me. Uh, if you're on the East Coast, it could be longer. I am in the same boat with the picking ordered very early. I've never. Um, yeah. Sherry, you must not have ordered at this time last because I remember this happened last year. It's so crazy. It's not easy. Uh, it's. Just how it goes. There we go. Enjoy the ride. Boom. All right, we got card number two done. We're gonna rock and roll right into card number three. And I'm gonna pull this mint one. It's been, not mint, the soft succulent. It's been wanting to be made since the first card. Okay, I think we're done with these. Oh, we'll leave them there. Soft succulent, Sahara sand, and black. <laughs> and then you've got one of these guys which I'm guessing, hmm, I, we must have had scraps of this. Otherwise, we would have cut it out of that, I think. There's another circle, but this one's a stylish shape circle. You have two of these little banners, which are the same banners from the other card. They're just a different color. They're white. And then you have some of this natural finish ribbon, the splatters again on the soft succulent piece. You will have... These are actually from the same piece, you guys. What I did is I cut them as a square, or it's like a rectangle first, and then as we were kidding them up, I cut them off right there, and then what it does is it splits it. So it should be a continuation, and you'll have a black mat for that one, and you'll have a black mat for this one, and that circle was cut out of the middle of that. And then you have your Sahara and your white piece for your inside. And this says, to the man who does everything. Let's grab that Stamparatus and show you how it works. 
what if you've never seen this before, it is an amazing tool to have. Stampin' Up! sells it. You can get it through me if you don't have a demonstrator. Um, it's $49, and it comes in very handy when you need something for consistent, repetitive stamping or the double stamping like we're about to do. I did do a class, if I have to guess, it was April of last year, and it was called the Kangaroo class, uh, something with kangaroos. And it was a stamp, I called it the Stamparatus 101 class. So if you guys go to YouTube or Facebook and you do Cards by Christine Stamparatus 101, you should probably come up with that class. And I show four different ways, maybe five, more than, oh, more than three and less than five, or between three and five. I can't remember how many different ways that you could use a Stamparatus, including the mirror technique is great to use with this. So what I did is I put this white piece of paper down with tape. I stamped up, pretend that this is here. Pretend that there's a white piece here. You ink up and you stamp on the white piece. You move this piece of paper away, remembering where it goes on here. You go die cut it out. And then now you have a template to put this piece in. You don't need to necessarily use a magnet. It sits in there pretty good, but there are, the, it does come with magnets. Two magnets, I don't know where this one is, but I have um, Gorilla tape around this one so that if it clinked together with another one, it wouldn't snap it and break it. Those are handy for when you need to, to kind of hold your paper down. And then what happens is this kind of nestles in there. What I like to do, this height is about the same height as an ink pad. So when you put that ink pad under there, it kind of helps keep it even versus crooked. To me, this is crooked. So by putting that in there, it helps keep it even. And what you're going to do is take your ink and inky dinky do really good set it over the top and do the marinating thing this is great for let's say you're making swap cards and you want to make 20 of them if you would stamp this 20 times on a card stock and then have to go die cut them every time you die cut them you've got to line that die up around the perimeter where this way you could go die cut your 20 of them, keep them as close as possible, and then come over here and put it in the hole. You can see this is very blah, not blah, it's washed out. It's not very strong in image. So then go back here, and as long as that's in the exact same spot, that's the trick. I should have not have really pulled it out, but and that's where a little tape might have been helpful. But I'm going to ink this up again. And I think last night, Chris and Judy said three times. As long as that lands straight exactly in the same spot, we should be GTG. Good to go. And let's... Hi, Lori Baxter from Northern Utah. Let's see what happens here. Okay. It was in the same spot. It's darker. Looks a lot more crisp is what I would say. If you want to go for the glory, go for the third time's a charm, ink it up one more time. Because we're going on Sahara sandpaper versus white, it's the texture of the cardstock is a little bit different. Let's hope that it lands right on the same spot. If you're off a hair, you might get a shadowy look to it. But if we got it in the right spot, we're gonna see once if it looks good. Oh, yes. I think I'm happy with that. Look how crisp that looks. And that was because of using the Stamparatus. To clean the Stamparatus, if you want, you could take a piece of scratch paper, and I always try to get as much ink off ahead. I would definitely use a chamois. And more of a blot. I tried to do this, and if you do that, you might risk moving your stamp. So it's more of a blot, blot, blot. Take it, pick it up, use your fingers to do this. Don't be afraid of the chamois, it's not gonna bite you. It does feel weird and squishy, but it's not going to bite you, I promise. And then this is ready for my class on Saturday. To the man who does everything, we're going to use the sending birthday wishes on this one. And we will clean it. There is... There is also... This is a perfect complimentary because you mean so much to me. And then a note of thanks. Both of those are good. We will do sending birthday wishes and use 
a uh, memento black. And put that near the top. Hopefully I have it straight. Good. Lynn likes to use the template with the Stamparatus as well. Very helpful. I definitely agree. This one has a little corner thing in the, that matches. There is this little picture framey corner-esque thing. Let's just use it so I can show you guys what it looks like. I always look at the back to make sure the ink is getting on the stamp really nicely before I go. And there it's good. We're going to put this in the four corners of this one. Once you get it inked up good that first time, usually it stays good if you just, but it's good to look too. You see a lot of uh, rubber coming through there. It's not inked up very good. All right, that's what our focal image is on the inside of this one because it matches the outside. That, now let's see what we can glue. That can get glue, this can get glue. This and this can get glue. All right, you guys ready to get glue happy? <laughs> One, two, three, and we're gonna be smart and do this one. So let's get this guy done first. Have you guys done a layout like this before? Hi, Melody Miller. Where it's the same piece, but then split like that into a panel, two different panels. So then this one can go, mm, right, this one can go like this. And this goes on the front of the card base. This will go on the inside. Like so. Doing good. Let's pop these up with dimensionals and I'll go back, you guys. We might finish off this sheet here. I think we've finished off quite a few sheets here recently. So the black dimensionals come as a set of four sheets. You get two minis and two regulars and it's six dollars versus the 425 but that's because you're getting a fourth sheet whereas the white packs you get three each we're gonna pick that one off and then we'll pick these guys off perfect use for the black dimensionals now the border is a little bit thicker of Sahara sand. So we're gonna go, or maybe not. <laughs> I think that that border I have on here is a little bit more, where this one, it's a little less than a quarter inch. But either way, this is going to be then, it's popped up in the middle. And what happens is the point here kind of is in the middle of the middle, and then it hits down here. And the dimensionals are gonna go in the middle section here. And then we're gonna put liquid glue on the rest of it. So a little, oh, let's make sure we have it going the right way. So we'll put a little bit of liquid glue up at that peak and at that one. And then we're gonna line that bottom up and center that. Good. So we're popped up in the middle and glued flat. So now we're flush like that. And these little banners go next. We're going to use a little tear and tape. You could use liquid glue, but I want instant gratification with it drying. That's why we're going to do some tear and tape instead of liquid glue. It's not going to risk moving around on us. This will go. I do that. I did that on the other one too. I'm going to go like that. So you see a little white and then on this side you can see a little white and to make sure that they're lined up what you can do is get that straight oh that looks good I just lined up the uh, the edges here so that it's straight across then we have the black circle 
which will go something like that. And I believe I popped that up. So let's go grab some of these. You guys, da -da -da, we can put another sheet to rest. And we're going to put one there, one there, and then we'll go to the little babies. It's the baby. And that will go. Oh, I just missed the garbage. Oh, man. <laughs> I got dimensional backs all over. <laughs> this one will go. It's kind of like you can see the same section of the circle. Like that much, that much. I just tried to make that look even. And now for our ribbon. You need some tear and tape waiting in the wings. I think maybe four. And then we need, or maybe not even four. Let's see what, I, you know, I think what I'm, I might have given you enough ribbon. Let's see what I did. If we go, this is, I have my sample is just a loop here, but I feel like I might have enough to do a loop and a tail. I'm not sure. Let's see. I'm gonna cut it in half first to see what I have enough to do. Cause a loop and a tail could look cool too. Oh, I should have cut that at a diagonal. Oh man, oh well. Let's try this. Do this. Nope, it's not an, ah, it's a, it would be a really short tail. If I would have cut that at a diagonal, it would have been perfect. But let's just see. If you cut this piece at the diagonal, then you have your diagonal ends ready to go. Where I cut it, that's not my ribbon scissors. I cut it at, it's straight, and I should have cut it at a diagonal. So let's just see if it works. I'm gonna try one more time. You gotta be really close to the edge here. If we flip this. I actually like just the loop. Having the tail on here puts a little femininity to it. And if you want to give this to a guy, he might not always appreciate that. So I'm gonna go back to the tried and true sample here of having a little loop like that. And so if that's the case, we have it on that side. And then what we're gonna do is make the loop on this side. Have it come out the bottom. It's perfect. And then a little bit. So cutting your ribbon in half will be necessary, um, I would think. Otherwise you start it and you loop this way and you come back that way, but cutting it in half helped a lot. And then this is gonna get popped up onto our card in the front here. And I'm not gonna put a lot of dimensionals back here. This, actually, I'm gonna pick the tear and tape off. By folding that ribbon in half, it gave it enough thickness, I think, to help offset the dimensionals in the middle. So we'll see if it lays okay. Ah, sticking to my fingers. And that will go right in the middle. Boom, just like that. Now this is the one the card that has the black matte dots. And I'll be honest, you probably don't even see them. They are, there's two of them here and one here. And you either got too big and a small or too small and a big for your black matte dots. And I always put the small and the big one together. I shouldn't say always. Always is a strong sentiment or a strong word. <laughs> I usually. And then I put the other one down yonder. And the one that's down yonder is the one that you would have two of. And when it comes to style eyeing, you could Stella your white banners here and your circle. Now for this class, you guys, I always create a PDF tutorial. Any online class I do, I create a PDF tutorial. I don't always put them in my online store. This one, because it's a four, all the four card classes I do put in the online store. And since this is a four card class, I have it in the online store already. So if you go out there and you want to buy the PDF tutorial, if you buy it via my website, you're charged $11. But if you want to get it outside of my website and have me just email it to you, uh, you can pay with a, like a cash option and it's only $10 to get the PDF for the four cards. So that one's done. Card number three is in the books and... We have another fun fold, fan favorite, this pocket card. People love this one. This is our last one that we're going to do with you guys. And pull everything out. Lots of layers on this one as well, you guys. It is a card in a card. And so when you open this up, you've got the white piece and 
then it kind of pop, it fits right in the pocket like that. Holy smokes, you're amazing. Let's see here. I want to clean this before I knock it over. And this, you guys, always good idea. Get those stamps clean when you're done with them. And then that's done. We're gonna, yes, Carissa. I don't know if you remember this. But? Mm -hmm. Naughty Nancy's card. Oh, we did. And we don't have Naughty Nancy's card handy, do we? I don't think so. You guys, Naughty Nancy originally made a card with this pattern using this paper, too? No. No, what paper did she use? It was the broom. The, oh, yeah, you guys. Yeah, so Chris, I had a good point. I wish I would have I don't have that card at the... Mm, but it be in here. Because that is a brood for you. It was... It was the annual catalog, and you guys, one moment, we're looking to show you the card that we cased, and it's not this one, is it? That's Candy Michael. No. no? Okay. Something similar to that. Yeah. It's very it's similar, similar, right? If you want to peruse this one more time, I kind of went through it really quickly, and I don't see it. It would maybe be on this side, and I just might have missed it. But I feel like it was with the he's the man stuff. So we cased Naughty Nancy's card, and she doesn't even get to see that we cased her card. But she did the um, the brood for you, and she did similar colors, right? Mm -hmm. It was similar colors, but we used her template. So she did the team swap party with us. What was it, back in May? May, I think. June? May or June? Yeah. yeah. And so Naughty Nancy, kudos to her. She did a rock star of a card, and she <laughs> we cased it. I don't think, yeah, I don't want to have it there. So if we find it, we'll share it with you. This one, the back mats, they all fit together. There's This one's embossed with the time-worn type. Um, Becky Rohr said it might be cute to put two small dots in one of the glasses on the previous card. Oh, yeah, to make it look like eyeballs. <laughs> you guys have to be very careful. If you pick off... <laughs> Um, pay off a of paper. <laughs> yeah, it might be cute. Yeah. Uh, if you pick off dimensionals or if you pick off anything off of designer paper and it might pull the paper. She is smiling down, Maria. You are so true. It is. She is smiling down knowing that we cased her card. Uh, we think she's working on her Christmas cards up um, and she's got the girls rallied around her that she's already working on her Christmas cards um, and not leaving them to the last minute. <laughs> So we've got a Cajun Craze, a Basic Black, and then the Sahara Sand. All these just get glued together. She sure is, Sherry. I definitely agree. I don't think it's in there. Mm -mm. There's another. It's in that one of those, I bet. Mm -hmm. those, those bottom two. Are those annual? They look like annual catalog. Mm -hmm. So we're going to glue that one. And You guys, you ever do that when you flip over the paper and there's it's the same, but you feel like you have to flip it over? She found it! Yay! You guys get to see Naughty Nancy's card here. I should send this to Dave. Paper. Yes, look at this. This is Naughty Nancy's card. Oh, I'm gonna wait one second. I'm gonna get that glue. I'm gonna make sure that I glue this before I get any glue. So yes, yeah, so this is the card we case. We took this off the board a long time ago. And we're like, yep, we wanna do this. So you guys, it's like a very similar in times in terms of patterns. But what we did is we did the he's all that. She used the brew for you. She lo she did a lot. She always loved to fray. I don't know if you know. Like, yeah, she frayed her edges of her paper and to make it look more worn. worn. She embossed this piece. We embossed the other piece. Um, on ours, we did a double. Uh, we did a mat on the triangle here. She didn't. And then she used crumb cake. We used Sahara. And when you open it up, she's got O Ale. Yes, absolutely. You know, Chris, I was craving a beer all day. And so I, we might have to have a beer while... Maybe we'll wait till we're done. <laughs> Otherwise, I lose my track of what's going on. I'm going to drink. <laughs> no. <laughs> this, she used the white. You guys, this is the white crinkle seam binding ribbon, and she colored it with a black uh, blend. And, yeah, so this is going to the answers card. We should put this up on the shelf so we always have it. And then I think that tucks. So I'm going to – oh, her glue isn't sticking. So what we're going to do – ah, this is the perfect time to use eighth-inch tear tape. But if you don't have eighth inch tear tape, 
you take your this one and you just cut in half. Good call. I'm glad we found her card. Mm -hmm. It was in one basket or the other. So if you don't have the eighth inch tear tape, you can take your scissors and cut it. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that down here <laughs> just to provide some more glue. It's like you don't want to use too much glue because it will ooze out the edge. So we're just going to put a little glue right there. And we got, so yeah, go Naughty Nancy. Very pretty card. It's similar, but there's definitely lots of differences. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. We're going to leave that there to have, keep that waiting. And we can do our triangles. So the triangles, the triangles... The triangles. I could have sworn I had a triangle. Maybe I don't have a triangle. You guys, I feel like there it is. Nope, that's not it. Well, I'll be. A, hmm. I could have sworn I had a triangle for myself. Well, I will have to cut myself a triangle. This is a three by three piece of designer paper, and all it is is cut in half from one end to the other. And then this mat is about three and five sixteenths by three and five sixteenths. Same thing, just cut in half diagonally. And what needs to happen is this goes, we have this all the way at the bottom edge of the card, and you only want to put it on the two sides, not the long edge. And when I put my tear and tape on here, I do like for it to go all the way to the peak, and I don't worry about the little part that's hanging over, because when you pick this off, you can just fold that right back, and then you have the tear and tape all the way to the, the, the edge. All right, this, I'm gonna to try to cut it long enough or rip it long enough. And again, I'm trying to go over the edge. Oh man, hang on one moment, please. I cut this. Otherwise it's a quarter inch of tape. Right down the middle. You gotta use your glue scissors so you don't make your ribbon scissors wonky or your paper scissors. And this will go along the bottom edge. And again, I went slightly over and all I do is roll that back. If it's still too long, I roll it back and then that gives it goo. I spent hours at the dentist and got shots and now it hurts. I want cookies <laughs> or my mom come help me feel better. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh yeah, it's nothing like having your mom's cooking or your mom's baked goods to help you make you feel better. I definitely agree. I hope it all heals up good, Suzanne. I'm gonna save this for later in life. And then this needs to go keep feeling like I'm going to pull out my designer paper and then that'll go here right along the edge so that is what creates our pocket here then we've got did you notice here guys we cut these little guys right out of that mat which is perfect you'll have so this black mat goes onto the Cajun craze mat and then your foldy flap goes on the top of this and then this will go on top of that. So, okay, that needs glue, that needs glue, and then this can get glued. All right, in no particular order, we're gonna get glue on this, glue on this, and oh, the other thing, if you like, if you don't like the grilling paper, you could easily flip it over and use the Cajun Craze. Very versatile, you guys. Chris and I were thinking about this because I, like, I'm not the biggest fan of that paper because I don't like that the pigs are facing one way in one case and the cows are opposite. Wasn't that exciting for me? So if you don't like that, you could definitely flip it over and do a Cajun craze. Your call, whatever you want. And just to show you the difference in the cards, I think I'll do that for you so you can see what the Cajun craze looks like. Now, this isn't going to pop out as much, but we're committed, we've got glue on. This is gonna go on to here. And then this goes on to here. And then your paper, this one goes here. So it ties in greatly. And then the only thing is that that gets a little bit washed out, but it's, it's okay. We're gonna grab dimensionals. I was looking, I think I'm going to use the dark ones. And they're the little ones. So I'll use five of them. 
And then we can get to our stamping here momentarily. This will go, oh man, I made a mistake. One moment, please. <laughs> okay, my glue is still, I forgot. We gotta get that little guy in here. So I'm gonna leave this with something in the middle. <laughs> so one, <laughs> oh, you guys, I got ahead of myself. Okay, I'm just gonna let that sit like that so that it's not gonna dry. We gotta color this little ribbon. So this starts off as black and white gingham and it doesn't look black and white on here though, does it? It's because it's colored. You could use crumb cake or Sahara sand oh, or ivory. This one's ivory. That looks good too. And I use the fine tip on here so that it doesn't fray the other end. So whichever color you want, ivory looks just fine with it actually. And what we're going to do, it does generally go through to the other side, but I am going to flip it over and do the other side. And now we're going to be clever. We've got to get a little, I'm going to, let's see here. All right. Oh, good. Corinne Braxton just texted, she messaged me. Her flight is booked. She's flying in from Montana for the Winter Creative Escape. Wow. Yay! Go, Corinne. That's awesome. So we're going to fold this in half and have it go like that. Ink the edge of the tag. Ink the edge of the tag. I'm not sure what you mean, Donna. And Cindy said it's a great idea. I just don't know what the idea is. <laughs> Ink the edge of the tag. So that, I'm gonna put another one over the top. And it's not a tag that we're actually gonna be pulling, so it doesn't have to be stapled, but we want it to go in between these two layers so we don't see it back here. And then you can use your ribbon scissors. We'll trim the tail. So any kind of natural colored light marker will be good with this one. And I pre-ordered on December 1st, and it's arriving Monday, the December 12th. Yet yeah, 12 days. Oh, with a sponge and ink. Yes, absolutely. Yes, you could definitely use a sponge dauber. No problem. And we did that in a couple classes now where we inked the ribbon instead of using a marker. I definitely agree. All right, now we're back to business. This goes on, centered as you wish. And then these little die cuts are from this set. What I'll do is just put, I think, a little bit of glue behind those big sections and let that be enough for me, like that. And the one peak goes down here and the other ones fit nicely. So there's one. Yes, you could definitely distress the Cajun Craze rectangle. Definitely agree. You guys, the sky's the limit with how you want to add, just like Naughty Nancy did to her card. You saw how she distressed that? Absolutely, it's all frayed and warm looking. Go for it. And then we need to do a little stamping. So we can't get by without stamping something. This one has the holy smokes. You're amazing which is this one. Ink that up good. Hi, Mary Schreiber, you ordered on December 1st and it's arriving on the 13th, yes. We're gonna put that, oh gosh, my countertop is the same color. <laughs> it's hard to see that, so let's, oh man. We're just gonna guess about right where it needs to go, maybe right there, that looks good to me. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. I get what you're saying, Donna. I just looked up at the notes up here. What Donna just said is I could have sponged, if you guys like the Cajun Craze better than the the animal pattern here and the silverware, you could have sponged. Yeah. You know what? I get what you're saying. I think what you're saying is sponge the edges of it and we'll do that because we can. I... We'll go grab a sponge. Let's see what this looks like. Good, holy smokes, you're amazing. Oh, sending, yeah, hang on. Let me go get a sponge real quick. How's dinner? Good. 
I may be late or slow to the party, you guys, but I eventually see it and it all connects and makes <laughs> the dots connect. Dispress with a sponge dauber. All right, so I'm gonna take black ink and go around the edges of this one and see what it looks like. There you go. Good idea takes a team. <laughs> and on the inside, there's not a lot of room in here. So we're going to have to figure out what we can do for a sentiment. Now, I've already got dimensionals here. And I've lost a little bit of the stickiness when I pulled them up. So instead of adding more dimensionals, this might take a little bit longer to dry. But I think what I'll do is just put whoa, more glue over the top of those versus adding more dimensionals. And that one goes like that. Good idea. And then this one gets popped up as well. I was like, where did I put my dimensionals? Right in front of my face, where they always are. So two there. <laughs> so Donna, I will definitely admit when you said <laughs> the original thing, which was ink the edge of the tag. I did not understand what that meant. But when you wrote ink the edges of the Cajun Craze rectangle, I got that. <laughs> and then this is gonna go in the middle. And the one thing I didn't call out, but you don't want to put too much dimensional over here because you want this to be able to tuck in and not get caught there. You want it to get so it, you know, get it caught so it sits right about there. And I will be honest, I have no idea. My piece of uh, designer paper did not come on a surface. Uh, but it looks, yes, absolutely. So, okay, so pretend that this mat, I gotta, I gotta go cut myself a new one and I'll, I'll glue it on here later uh, before we pick a winner. But pretend that this is here, right? So you've got the tan there. Now you can see the difference. So there's, at, you're at the eye doctor, right? So here's option one, and then here's option two. They both look easily or um, e e as nice as each other, right? It just depends if you want to. Like, let's say you don't have the holy smokes, you're amazing. You could have put something else in there, no problem. Yeah, I know. I am a fan. I love that that designer paper with the Cajun like that. But if you have a grilling person in your life that is all over that, you might choose to give them the grilling side of the paper. That's where it's nice to have choices. And on this one, holy smokes, you're amazing. I think what I'll do is I'm going to stamp wishing you a happy Father's Day because that comes in the set. But I think what I will do is not glue it in because whoever wins this card may want to. Oh, you know what we'll do? Hopefully I'm stamping this straight. Enough. That could be like that. But then there is hope you have the best birthday. And honestly, I mentioned you guys earlier, I didn't, I, I found a stamp set that's retired. It's from actually from Celebration. And what I'll do is whoever wins this card can glue it in and they can pick whichever one they want. So that could go for birthday or a Father's Day. And... I don't know if there is a good inside stamp to put in there from this set. Oh, there's the piggy set. Hmm. So there's a number one, love this guy, hello handsome. I'll hold off and whoever wins the card can pick what they want and stamp a different focal image or a focal image, I should say. <laughs> there. So you got happy birthday or whoever wins it can just glue that in. So pretend I glued it and you got an inside in and then that will be like that. Perfect. We need to put the last three embellishments on though. There will be two big ones and potentially a small one if you did yours the same as me. And they go right in the centers. This is black, but these, the rustic metallic pearls, they are the dots. They definitely look better being brown on the black. And then you've got one more. 
And we were like, where do you put the last one? And uh, it was here and it had fallen off. So I'm going to put it like there. <laughs> oh, there we go. And I don't know what we stellaed, but I was intending to stella those little die cut pieces here. And you could always stella the ribbon too. Perfect. All right. I think we did fabulous. I was I don't even know if I paid attention on um, last night to see who picked this paper versus picking this paper. I don't know. I don't know if Judy's still watching, but Judy, I think Judy picked this one too. Okay, we did really good. Wow, 150. I mean an hour 50. Fabulous. We're gonna do some door prizes. See if we can pick some winner winner chicken dinners. But before we do that, you guys, I always like to clean up my shop a little bit. <laughs> because if I don't do it now, it stays, it stays sitting dirty <laughs> until I come back, which isn't always nice. Then I have to pick it up then. We'll need all of this stuff. That's it, you guys. There weren't a lot of ink pads. There wasn't a lot of crazy with this one. Like there has been in the past. So we're going to put that there. This is my sample. I'll need that. We need to set this out so we don't forget to put designer paper on there. And then we're going to just glue, I mean glue. We're going to clean this one. Oh, you guys like them. Perfect. Love it. Judy picked the DSP. Well, yeah, I know that. But which one, Judy? <laughs> Oh, I think you picked the 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 um the ham one the the cat the cat with the pig one. I think that's what you picked, but but you could have picked the Cajun Craze one too. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. That's another class in the books, you guys. So that's he's the man, and some great guy cards. I think you probably know we don't. We pull in guy cards every now and then. We've really been inundated with Christmas and the holidays here since late September. Early September, I think, was fall, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and then we rolled right into Christmas. And I've been hearing people say, I'm over Christmas cards. I'm over. I'm over. So Judy picked the black. Okay, so Judy, I think that's what you meant. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people, are, I mean, you could be finishing up your Christmas cards, but a lot of people are getting to the point of like, yep, let's move on to other things. Um, can you explain the technique club class? Yes. All right, I can. Um, so back to the the masculine card. So this is it was great to do a non Christmassy class um, in December, and then I think you guys will have um, Diane and I picked for Let's Just Stamp Splendid Thoughts on Monday. Just to show you that real quick, this is what's Monday non Christmassy again, but still the mini catalog the holiday catalog because that's where splendid thoughts comes from Krista do you want to tell me how many are left of the let's just stamp um in just December she grabbed the sign up sheets it would be like the second last page there would be open numbers it was like three. three people okay so, that sounds right yeah so I've got three spots left at this that sounds right there are about three spots left for this class if anybody wants to get in on this one so that's what's coming up on Monday and then on Thursday of next week is the monthly class doing these three cards. I'm pretty sure I have some kits of these as well. Not more than 10, more than three, but not more than 10, I think. Um, so that one's coming up next week. And then um, the following Monday, you guys, just to keep you out on the radar, we've got the ink, paper, scissors, which most of these mailed out today. I have a few that didn't yet. I was waiting on, I got a team gift delivered today. And so I was waiting for that team gift to be delivered. So um, there are a few that didn't have your ink, paper, scissors mailed out because I can include your your gift. So um, so I'm excited. I can't. I'll share it with you guys after I share it with my team when I um, what I have that I have in store for everybody. But so most of the ink, paper, scissors mailed out today, except for I believe maybe six or so. But this one again, it's there's there's they're all gone. But this is coming up in two weeks from tonight. The um, ink, paper, scissors. So those are gone. And then I already showed you guys the ringed with nature, rings of nature. Okay, so we'll do a couple things. We'll talk about the technique club class for those that want to know. <laughs> because there's not a lot of details and I've not done this class before. And this is brand new. I'm going to be collaborating and working with Rose Coleman from Canada. And she does a technique club and I do a sweet card class, which is tonight's class. 
and she's looking. So she has customers, not customers. I wouldn't even say customers. She has people who watch her that reside in the U.S. and ask her for her kits. And I have people in that watch me that are from Canada that would like my card kits. But because we can't cross boundaries with our sales, I, I don't ship my classes to people in Canada or outside the U.S. I don't want to deal with customs or fees or international shipping. And I can't accept orders to get classes for free either. But Rose being in Canada, she could kit up and produce my class. Um, and kit it up, I mean, like kit, I should say produce card kits. And she could sell them um, right out or she could have her customers place an order to get them for free. And she would kit them up. And vice versa. I could do her technique club class here in the States in terms of kitting it up. And what will happen is she will still be teaching the class and um, the club class, and I will be teaching the sweet card class, meaning I will still be doing this on a Thursday night. Um, yeah, absolutely. When I, I'll have them down here, Trinket, so that you can see them when I uh, flip the camera the next time. So when I do this class next month in January, there may be customers in Canada that took this class with me. She's going to give me the... Um, the class list so I can say hi to them just like I'm saying hi to my US customers and she'll be watching with me and she will be kidding up let's say she gets 10 people to sign up for hers either however she wants to handle the pricing and she'll ship her kits out ahead of time so now the technique club class the same thing but opposite she is going to be teaching the class once a month whatever day I have on the calendar we've already talked she, we have dates that are signed up she's going to do a YouTube live so right now she's not in YouTube but she's going to be doing YouTube lives just like I'm doing and they will be in her channel. But when it comes to me, I'm going to be creating the event in my website. And I will be creating um, the afterwards. I always put the link to this video can be found here. And it will be a link to her video. So she's going to be teaching the class. So we tried to find a way to not make more work. I should say we've made more work. But we've, could you guys hear Carissa? She just snickered back there. So we have made more work, but we tried to minimize the extra amount of work in terms of we're not both teaching each class. She's still teaching her class. I'm still teaching my class. And um, she's going to write the PDF tutorial for her class. I'm going to write the PDF tutorial for my class. She's going to share my PDF with her customers, and I'm going to share her PDF with my customers. And then the only real extra work is we're going to have to create the kits. So I will create kits for the people that want to take that class with her in the States and vice versa. Now, what is her class? That's what like I'm getting to be, you know, to that point. Her class that I'm offering is a club class. A club class means that you place an order to get the class for free. And how I've got it set up is the same, pretty much the same as she does when you've taken 10 of them then you get host rewards. Um, but you have to place a minimum order using my current host code. And my current host code is always found on my website. And you order once during that month, and it's for the club class the following month. No, I, it's in the same month, sorry. So let's say it's January 1st, and you want to take the club class in January, then you'd place an order, minimum $45, using my host code, and then you tell me it's for the club class, okay? It can't go for multiple classes, right? So it's for the club class. And what happens is I will log you. <laughs> I should say Chris is going to help log. Uh, we're going to log. And once you've done 10 consecutives in a row, you get the perks. The perks are uh, $75 host rewards and a half off item. And how that works is when you buy $45 times 10 months, that's $450 and that is enough for you to earn. It's actually $63, but I upped the antic and I'm putting it at $75 as a extra thank you for placing 10 consecutive orders specifically for the club class. So, um, so $75 in host rewards. And what you'll do is on that 10th month, after you've placed your 10th order, uh, I will want to know what you want to spend your $75 on and um, what half off item you'd like. And now there are some exclusions. You can't get certain things for half off. So those exclusions are sweets and the machine, the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. So if Stampin' Up doesn't allow me to get it for half off, it's not a half off item. But um, bundles, like the block bundle, the clear block bundle, 
like at $70 could be your half off item. You know, so you get, you get that. Okay. I'm not sure Diane, if it was a swap card from last August. Yeah. You must be watching and commenting now. I, I think Diane might be commenting about Naughty Nancy's card. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I think it wasn't August. I think that that was from the annual catalog and that team swap party was in May or June. We thought it might've been June, June 26th. Maybe it was the same day as a, as a team meeting. Um, so now the cards, let's talk. So hopefully Donna, I hope that's making sense. Hopefully you say, yep, that's making sense. And so, um, wh what are the cards though? So it's going to be, so, sh so here's the thing. Chris and I usually design the sweet cards and Rose is going to go off of the cards that we create. And then Rose is going to create the, the club technique cards. She's already picked out the stamps that she's going to feature. Uh, so you can see them on my schedule and it'll be three cards. And then one of the cards, so three cards using that same stamp set. And then one of the cards will feature the technique. All right. So you're going to make three, it'll be three card kits, but then the added perk of the club class is you're going to get a card from me. And I don't know if you've ever, no, cause Rose doesn't do it publicly that she, this is new for her too. You guys, this is going to be a little bit to get the irons uh, kinked out or whatever they say, something kinked out. Um, <laughs> the, um, the, there's going to be a card that fits. I'm going to flip the camera down for you to see the cards. There's going to be a trinket. These are for you. There's going to be a card, like um, half a sheet of paper on white cardstock. So basic white cardstock. The bottom half is going to have the technique explained. And then the top half will have the sample of whatever the technique is. And I, or one of my helpers will be creating that technique. And eventually you're going to buy a little binder, a little baby binder with page protectors, and you'll be able to slip these pieces into the page protectors. And then let's say over the course of 10 months, you will be able to flip through this binder and see different techniques. You could save the card um, that was created and put it in there with it, or you'll have that sample piece of what it is. Uh, so she did, um, uh, she did uh, last month uh, where you take and put ink on a, um, like a paper plate with soap or something. She did something with soap and the soap got bubbly. And then she put her shaving, not the shaving cream, but I think she used soap. But anyways, you put the um, colored foam on your cardstock and then you clean it off. It wasn't shaving cream though. It was something else. And she had to blow bubbles and she had to make this. Okay. So I don't know if I know what I'm getting myself into, right? I'm still wrapping my head around this. I'll be honest but you'll get the technique card, you'll get uh, some, a card for your book, and then you'll get two other cards. And so that's what the technique club is. Um, Order-based only, again, and that is because you are gonna get the host rewards at the end. It has to be 10 consecutive months, just as if you're in a club. I'm only doing this as an online class, at, I think, at the moment, because I don't have because I'm not teaching it. Rose is teaching it. Uh, so D Donna, does that answer your questions? Does everybody, um, my, I hope that makes sense. Uh, and I will talk about that more too. As soon as she gets her first one designed, I'm hoping she's going to have it designed here in the next week or two. I will absolutely be having to recreate those cards and then share them with you. And um, maybe I can coordinate with her to that she could do a video. I don't know. We'll figure it all out. You guys, it's a new, new ad hoc. And that's not ad hoc. It's going to be a, a main core class. Um, we're going to figure it out. Just be patient with us as we figure it out, but just know we'll, we'll track, um, what you have to do for those that order multiple classes by placing orders. You just have to be able to tell me which order you want for this. And you have to be diligent about knowing that you need to order every month. Cause if you miss a month, it starts over. And, um, I, I, I don't think I'll make exceptions because that is written out that you have to be consecutive. And if you need reminders every month or so, I don't know, like I'll try to figure it out, but, um, that's it. Okay. Donna says, yes, that makes sense. Um, as soon as I get those cards and can understand, um, I'll be honest with you. I can't remember what her first one is. Is it share a milkshake, right? Carissa? She's, and she's doing the kissing technique, right? So that's what, what's coming up first. And so, yeah, good question though. Um, well, there's something else I was going to say too, but I'm not sure. But Trinket, did you get to see the cards okay? Was that good? Um, all right. So you guys, I wanted just to remind you guys, Judy Bobo won this from the seasonal sale drawing. I hadn't picked out a stamp set at that time. 
So I picked out the Easter Bunny stamp set that's in the um, new spring catalog. So that's for Judy Bobo. And then, uh, we, oh, I need uh, to know the class sign up sheets back to do a winner for the this class. Okay. And then. January technique is share milkshake with rock and roll. Oh, I'm so sorry, you guys. I had the wrong technique. It's actually called rock and roll is what we're doing for January's technique. Rock and roll. All right. So, you guys. Um, Becky Gandolfo, you're number one. Barbarco is three, two. Tammy Steckling is three. And Jean Terwilliger, you're four. Linda Grady, you're five. Six is four. Oh, I remember what I was going to tell you guys. Six for Mary Lemke. Carmen Melendez is going to order. She had, I know she's going to wait. She was waiting till, till I think, tomorrow to do it. Um, seven, eight, nine. And this was, nope, and then, mil okay, perfect. So nine people, you guys. So let's grab the phone, and we're going to do random number generator, and we'll pick a winner, winner. So r random, and we had nine people. Let's see who our winner, winner chicken dinner is. Drum roll. Brrr. Number four, Jean Terwilliger. All right, Jean, I will have a prize for you. Um, and you know what? We're going to make sure I do. This is what I generally do, you guys. I pull out your card, <laughs> and I write your name on the back. And then the next time you get a class from me, I add a door prize, or I add it to your um, package. So door prize from the He's the Man. So that keeps me on my toes. And then we are going to share with you guys who the winners. We'll do another random number generator. Oh, we got to do the monthly card, too. But let's do these first. All right. This one goes to Debbie Schultz. Now, this is Debbie Buzzy at Work Schultz. Uh, this is the ink, paper, um, yeah, it was ink, paper, scissors, bows of holly. So, yay, Debbie won this one. Drum roll. This one goes to Sherry Everett. Sherry Everett won this beautiful card from ink, paper, scissors. This beauty card goes to Barbara Moynan from Vermont. So congratulations to Barbara Moynan. This one is the pocket card. That one goes to a Barbara Godby. <laughs> My two Barbaras, yay. All right, this one, you guys, goes to, now this is the monthly class from November. So both of these classes, you can watch the, the replays anytime. This one goes to Bonnie Kemen. Congratulations to Bonnie. This one is our pocket card. I stuck the extra tree in here so they can do with it what they want. Kathy Sanford. Kathy, you were watching earlier. I don't know if you are still watching, but if you are, let me know your address, maybe, because I think, I don't know if I have it. This one, also from the monthly class, goes to Miss Jeannie Parker. Woohoo! All right, so... I think, Kathy, if you could confirm your address for me, that would be fabulous. But I think that I have everybody else's address. So congratulations to all those winners. Yay. And what we need to do, you guys, I promised you guys I would <laughs> do a drawing. We got the monthly class as well. Not the monthly. The monthly creative challenge. We have the class card challenge and the other drawing. So I had it all ready to go, except for I never printed it. So let's see if I can make that magic happen really fast here. And not printing the PDF and not printing in color. You guys, I don't print a lot um, on my computer here or my printer. Um, I have an older printer. I actually bought it from Naughty Nancy about four years ago. And... Um, like, it doesn't work so great. So I don't do a lot of printing here. And I'm hoping it's going to print. So hang on. Let's just try one more time here. All right, now it should go. So that's why I don't, like, print out a lot of stuff for people. I am very sparing with the ink and everything it entails. And let's see if it works. Oh, man, it's not going to go, I don't think. <laughs> Oh, all right. So, all right. I'll have to talk through this, you guys, because my computer is right here and it's not printing <laughs> like it should be. 
and um, we have the the monthly creative challenge. So if you go to my website, not my website, my Facebook page, it's a pinned announcement at the top. It provides the links for the monthly card challenge and also the class card challenge. The monthly challenge, I have rules. <laughs> and I looked at it and it, I reread my rules and the rules say you need to announce or state what the stamp set is that you use that's current and, um, and then share your picture. And it has to follow the theme as well. So I wrote them down here. The themes were, I know you guys can't see me, but, um, cause I don't want to move my computer. It's on its last leg. The themes were for the last month were new year's, a gift card holder or Christmas. So and it had to be one of those three themes and calling out the name of the stamp set. And so some people didn't call out the name of the stamp set. Uh, I'm going to be a little stickler on this because it's part of the rules. And if you don't follow the rules, then it's not fair to the people that do follow the rules, right? Okay, so we addressed that. And so there were two people that followed the rules <laughs> and announced their stamp set. It was Millie Kindle and your number one and Sherry Pyre, your number two. And there were three other people who shared cards, but I'll be honest, they I didn't see the stamp set name there and I didn't necessarily know if they were current products. And I don't have the time to go research for something that I'm trying to give away a prize for. I just want people to tell me what the stamp set is and I can say, oh yeah, that's what it is. Okay, so just putting that out there, you guys. So I'm gonna pick for between two people, we'll flip this down, two people. Number two, Sherry Pyre. Sherry Pyre, you were number two. So I will have a prize for you and that was the monthly card challenge. So the class card challenge, uh, that is based off of two months. It's based off of the month that we're in and then the previous. And this drawing was for November. Uh, so these were cards that you bought or got for free, like kits or classes you got for free from me or you paid for. Um, so you're putting the cards together. I really like to see that they're not sitting on the corner or um, in the bag in the corner on your floor collecting dust. So I have an incentive for you guys to put your cards together, uh, take a picture of the class when you're done with it, and then post it to the Facebook post, which is the class card challenge post. And I'll do a drawing. And it's got to be from like, so this one was for November and October cards. And I just created the post for December. So that'll be November and December cards. And so there were more than two people. And you guys, I can't see from here over here. So I'm going to read them off really loud. And I think you'll be able to hear me. Um, we had for the class card challenge, we had Deanna Stell, Kathy Jackson, Millie Kindle, Carmen Melendez, Francis Rodriguez, Angela Knutson, Barb Johnson, Hilda Nell, Vilches, and Melanie Foy. Okay, so I'm going to flip this back down, you guys, and that was nine people. Nine people. Hit the word generate. Number six. Number six on my list is Angela Knutson. All right. So, Angela, I will have a prize for you on that one. Awesome. So, I mentioned earlier I forgot to do the top fans. So, I will have to pull those names tonight and do that drawing. And I'll have them announced in with the post tomorrow morning. Um, I also missed pulling the VIP drawing uh, for the half-off bundle. So, I'll also figure that out. But the other list I did pull. If you placed an order with me that was over $50 on December 4th, first or second. So between those two days, I pulled in all those names to do a drawing to win a prize. That prize is a stamp set from the new mini catalog and it is the Silly Goose stamp. I wasn't sure what I thought about this. <laughs> oh, Donna, I'm so happy that everybody loved the candy cane cards that you made. That's awesome. I Until I looked at this and I saw these, these geese here fist pumping or like wing pumping and I thought, oh, that's kind of cute. Um, a silly goose told me it's your birthday. So I thought, well, this would be a cute stamp set to have somebody win as a prize. It might not have been something that somebody would have bought, but winning it free, hopefully um, it's inspiring. Uh, sending gaggles of good wishes. All right, so that's what we have on the stakes here are on the line. Let me read off the names for you guys. Um, I will flip this way. You, I don't know if you'll be able to see me, but we had 20 people, you guys. So we have Debbie Schultz. So it's Debbie Buzzy at Work Schultz. Lynn Beasley, Carolyn Ketchmark, Bonnie Gravlin, Karen Stagg, Deanna Stell, Tracy Reed, Mary Lemke, 
Beverly Smith, Melody Miller, Latokia Trigg, Vicky Rodriguez, Beverly Smith, Millie Kindle, Brooksy Belke Skeeg, Philly Sinto, Carmen Sanders, Brenda Crudwig, and Judy Bobo. Woohoo! Yay! And you know, there was also Debbie Schult. I just looked at this and I'm like, oh, the first person was actually Debbie Schult, and she's the DT. And then 20 was Debbie Schultz, <laughs> the TZ. And oh, actually, uh, Debbie Schultz was 19. So I got both of my Debbies in here. <laughs> so there's 20 people. And so we'll flip this down, and we are going to see who is the lucky duck. Oh, I, <laughs> if you put zero and one, the winner is one. <laughs> All right, so we're going to put in 20. And we're going to click the word generate and see who's feeling lucky. Number three. Okay, let's see who number three was. Ah, Carolyn Catchmark. All right, Carolyn. You are the Lucky Duck winner of this stamp set. Awesome sauce. Oh, and I just, I should have used that for your last name. So Carolyn Catchmark. Awesome. So you have the door, um, the drawing, drawing for December 1 and 2. Yay. That was what I did. I keep sliding off my chair, you guys. All right. I think, did we do it all? I'm hopeful that I didn't forget anything besides what I told you I forgot, <laughs> which was top fan and the VIP drawing. And I don't know. Did you guys enjoy the man, manly man cards? I hope you did. I think you did. Um, it's always good to have a couple of those in your arsenal. And those cards were designed with, like, you did not have to have that stamp set to make those cards. You could have used any sentiments you had in your stamp and vault, you guys. So, yeah, congratulations, you guys. Carolyn. And we had Jeannie and Debbie and Sherry, Barbara, Barbara, Bonnie and Kathy. Um, awesome sauce. And then Sherry and Angela. So good job. Lots of winners tonight. Um, don't know. Did I forget anything, Carissa? At least I can ask somebody in the room and they might answer. I don't believe so. Okay, good deal. All right. I think that's it for now. Just remember tomorrow I'll be with Carissa off or um, all day working on designing cards. If you have an emergency, which I don't know, Tyler says there are no, there are no such things as stampin' emergencies. <laughs> um, but if there's an emergency, I'd call because I'm gonna probably have my phone on silent tomorrow so that we can um, crank out as much uh, designing work as we possibly can with the goal of having all nine or eight of the um, cards finished for the winter Creative Escape and the 3D project. That is what we're working on. Woo. And then you guys don't forget about craft roulette tomorrow, 630. You may see Chris again for that, or you might not. She's going to have to let me know. <laughs> It'll be a surprise for you guys if she is. Okay. Oh, Carolyn's still watching. Yay. So awesome. Um, perfect. You guys, well, lots of sunshine, love and hugs to you. One thing that Carissa told me just tonight, and that's something I have to pay attention to is when I hit the end button, it ends it early. So I say, I hope you guys have a lot of um, a good night and lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you. And then I usually hit the end button, but what happens is it ends it early. So I'm going to let it end uh, and give it 10 seconds and keep smiling at you until it goes away. <laughs> and then maybe you understand why you always have missed me saying that, or maybe not. I don't know. Oh, Kathy's still watching. So Kathy, uh, definitely send me your address if you don't mind. All right, you guys. Love you a long time. We'll see you next time. Bye. Think I'm good? No. Nope. Not good? Okay. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Still not good? No. Nope. Okay. We're testing, guys, in case you can still hear this. We are doing a test of the public broadcasting system. <laughs> good night, everybody.